Excited to be back with another episode. Oh yes, and it's a good one. We've got another guest for everyone. Very exciting. We're enjoying having some guests on the podcast for this season. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, the theme of this season, as we kind of talked about previously, is being visible online. Um, and as one of our mutual clients has kind of gone through this rebirthing process of branding and website launching recently um we really wanted to bring neve on as a guest for the podcast and she was kind of an absolute must really for us wasn't she um do you want to introduce neve before we say hello and yeah i can do give a little background so neve is known as the um as in wellness coaching and is nutrition and lifestyle coach specializing in gut health and irritable bowel syndrome Neve has been, also been a community pharmacist for the last 15 years, and her mission is to help stressed out women make up with their gut and see their sensitivity as their superpower. I love that line. Um, so they can let go of food restrictions and stress that often come with having IBS, otherwise known as irritable bowel syndrome. So, Welcome, Neve. Good morning, Neve. Hi, ladies. How are you both? <laughs> yeah, well. good. We're very excited to have you join us for this conversation. Oh, I'm excited to be on the podcast. Thank you so much for asking me to be a guest. Two of my faves. <laughs> You're welcome. Our feeling is so mutual. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, not obviously actually for our listeners, obviously to us, <laughs> <laughs> we know why we're we're all connected as individuals. Um, we've all kind of been in a similar circle. For a long time um mm -hmm. as always it comes back to vicky vicky Schilling, um the wellness business mentor and we kind of i think neve i think you were a member of vicky's membership and we're coming to copywriting clinics and yeah Sa sammy and i were connected via vicky as well so it's kind of we're all part of that lovely circle of goodness um we're also all very much open and out there about being sensitive people and sensitive souls in business um, and that really is going to feed into this conversation today enormously is a big chunk of what unites the three of us as well as the fact that we all have a history of gut health issues and tummy troubles um, and I think Neve we're probably going to dip into a little bit how that relates back to the the sensitivity piece as well um yeah. so sammy do you want to talk about how we've ended up working together as a as a unit yeah. three of us yeah so as you mentioned neve is part of just start now and so was i so neve knows me from my kind of previous life of um while i was still working in my corporate role and trying to transition at that point more into nutrition and obviously very quickly I think we clocked that we both had um a rather sensitive gut and struggled with a lot of similar issues and obviously that was a massive reason why I was shifting from a corporate role into sort of working for myself was was part of that process of trying to manage uh, a gut condition and lowering the stress and all those things that that new um talks about and helps her clients with so I think we bonded quite quickly over um over that and so obviously we've known each other for quite a long time. So obviously then I went through my big pivot and went back to being a creative, but in a sort of different new um, format. So yeah, Neve reached out because obviously she kind of knew that I'd get the business um, when she saw me, you know, launching my web design business. And so we had initial phone call and chatted through kind of where Neve was at and where she wanted to go. And um and it was obvious from the discussion that, you know, we, she had an idea, didn't you, Neve? And then yeah. um, we knew there was like a little bit of a little piece missing that I thought, well, you know, Lee is going to be so helpful to chat through some of that clarity piece um, with your ideal client and kind of stepping into this kind of new brand identity in a way and, and what that meant. So do you want to maybe start there with sort of, how you 
from your perspective, like how you sort of came to to working with us and what that meant for you on your journey? Yeah, so um, I uh, joined Vicky Schilling's Just Start Now, Just Start Now membership um, probably the year before last. And obviously uh, Lee has got a copywriting clinic with um, Vicky Schilling. So that's how I got to know Lee's name. <laughs> and then Sammy was, obviously you were in the, the Just Start Now membership as well, trying to launch your business um, and... We would have our own little discussions about <laughs> our sensitive tummies and I knew <laughs> that you would understand the whole IBS thing. Um, <clears throat> so when it came to me relaunching my business or trying to rebrand and kind of like narrow down my niche, um, I just knew that Sammy, as soon as I had seen that you had um, pivoted your career and that you were going to be designing websites, I was like, yeah, <laughs> there's only one woman for this job. <laughs> my previous website my developer did an amazing job but you know I hadn't really been specific enough with my niche at that time and um he probably wouldn't have understood um what it's like to have IBS um and a sensitive tummy and translating that into um the new website so yeah that's kind of how, how Sammy and I got together and um I would always struggle, I think, with finding the right words um, and having good ideas, but trying to get them out there so that they're not just whirring around in your head. Finding the right words that connect with people is definitely something you learn quite quickly when you join Vicky's membership, that there's so much more to just having a passion for helping people is not enough. You know, you need to <clears throat> be able to have the right words to really connect with people. So that's where Lee came in <laughs> um, and how the three of us, I guess, ended up working together. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it was, it was great to virtually meet. We've obviously never met in person, but um, Vicky's the common denominator, I guess. <laughs> yeah, as she often is. That's so weird. I've never actually really thought of that. And it feels because I've known you so long. It feels really weird that we actually have never met in person. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was thinking about that before this morning's call. I was like, we're saying we've met or that we meet, but like, you know, traditionally that would be in person, like face to face. But this is the new norm now, isn't it? Like just there's so many people I've met virtually <laughs> um, since lockdown. So, yeah, it's yeah. Um, opened up a whole other world, though, as well. So it's a, lots of positives with it. And how were you, I know when we, like, when we were talking um, about your rebrand, kind of how you were feeling at that point, because I know you kind of mentioned how, as you said, the, the, your website actually was, was great, but you just weren't yeah. feeling connected to it with yeah. the, the colours, the branding and the layout, what was on there wasn't quite, as you say, it's, it's an important thing, I think, to, for anyone listening that, is starting out on that business journey or you know might be a year in that I think we probably all go through that stage don't we where you kind of launch you kind of okay I want to get this off the ground and then it's only really through doing the work working with clients you yeah. know learning all those things it that it takes to launch a business where you kind of really get to hone it because it's a craft isn't it it's a craft with yeah, you know, absolutely. Like finding the right words you know feeling connected and aligned with your sort of visual brand identity and obviously we know that's harder for those of us that are a little bit more introverted and don't want to be quite so visible it's like a bit of a problem <laughs> and, and finding that balance yeah so there's a lot in that early stage journey and I think there's nothing wrong with in fact it's brilliant to get to that stage where you think well actually I'm now ready to really hone in on and use that knowledge from the last year or however long it is um, yeah. to then create yeah. something new that feels more aligned aligned yeah like I, I think when I when we be began working together and we were just at the very early stages you know I spoke a lot about just um not feeling confident to share my website because I just didn't feel like yeah I it wasn't that the website wasn't lovely it just didn't feel connected to anything on it and I think that was <clears throat> affecting I suppose my visibility as well because I wasn't directing people to my website um and like you said just feeling 
wanting to feel more aligned with your brand and kind of what you're about um and yeah that is definitely difficult when you are someone who is an introvert and struggles to be visible but you know that you can help people and that you have a place um in that whole space but it's difficult because sometimes you feel he who shouts loudest gets hurt um which is not always the case you know I mean I think there's just such a, a strong connection between um sensitivity and being an empath um mm -hmm. and having a sensitive tummy um the two rarely are <laughs> like they do definitely go hand in hand um and that's the common theme that I would see coming up with clients as well um probably something I only really realized myself in the last couple of years um because I think there's so much focus on food and diet when it comes to gut issues and really from my perspective it's very little to do with what's going on in your tummy <laughs> um unless you obviously have you know something true food allergies or you've got an underlying condition but I think it's um it's yeah the, the two are so closely linked that you can't really kind of separate them like if that makes sense and I think that's almost where like the sensitivity is your superpower kind of comes in. So yeah, yeah I don't know if you want to <laughs> chime in a little bit there with sort of like how you help. Yeah. 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 Part yeah. of you connecting with your clients is that you totally know how they feel, which I think is from my perspective, we're trying to get that through in the brand, but and the identity and the flow of the website. But obviously Lee you kind of helped in those early stages of, of getting the right words. Yeah. Cause Obviously, me. You you'd already identified that sensitivity is being really super connected to the the gut piece, um, yeah. and it being about so much more than food. But obviously, food being the sort of go to thing that everyone's doing, um, yeah. and the sensitivity is your superpower. Um, and I think the work that the two of you had started doing, you started to think. Mm, is this is this the angle and then when you and I sat down and did that power hour which was supposed yeah. to be about looking at the actual sales page um copy or the home page copy um but we actually ended up talking much more about this sensitivity is your superpower thing yeah. and that being the core thread because you, you were kind of having a bit of a wobble about whether you could and should lead with that purpose weren't you yeah I guess um like sensitivity I think is often viewed as a weakness mm -hmm. um, and I hate even saying that because um I think I struggled with it in myself for so many years but generally it was when I took a step back it was because other people were maybe saying no oh, you, you need to be less sensitive and you need to you know don't be letting things upset you or like things like that and I'm like so basically it's asking someone to not be themselves or like to like shun a part of themselves that actually um I would view that as such a strength in my um job as a pharmacist like you know is being able to to be an empath and feel you know exactly be able to put myself in someone else's shoes um and the same with the business like I think I, I do know exactly what it feels like. I, I know what it's like to kind of be focusing on food and like going to doctors and they're telling you there's nothing wrong. You just need to change your diet. And yet you're still having symptoms and you're you're getting nowhere. Um, And it was that kind of realization, that kind of aha moment. But I think that's that can be a difficult thing to share, you know, and to be kind of like I am sensitive or to kind of put that out there and say to people like, you know, see your sensitivity as a superpower don't see it as a weakness or shun it and when you embrace it then that can actually have help with your gut issues and your IBS you know when you kind of aren't trying to be somebody you're not um if that makes sense but yeah I mean I think that power error definitely turned into be more of a mindset thing for me just with kind of trying to find my place and, and what I was trying to say and what I was about when I relaunched the business um 
because there's lots of different angles you can come at with, you know, if you're a gut health expert or you deal with pe people who are struggling with IBS. But I just felt like there was enough people doing the whole food diet thing and not enough people looking at, well, maybe it's because you're an extremely sensitive person and your gut is really sensitive because of that. Um, so yeah, that, the gut brain connection. Yeah. yeah, there's something that you said there about how uncomfortable it is to come out and say I'm sensitive. And I think it's partly something you were saying about being told that you're too sensitive growing up mm -hmm. and all those experiences we have as a sensitive person in the world. You then feel like as an adult, am I painting a target on myself for people who want yeah. to pick on <laughs> sensitive people because you've been shaped by all of yeah. those experiences but that's obviously not helpful when it comes to us being of service and yeah. other sensitive folk seeing that they are not alone yeah and authenticity I think is a really important core value to me and I know to both of you and in your businesses and if you're not um, being open and maybe honest about that it's you are being a little bit inauthentic as well um, but yeah definitely like I think it's <laughs> when your previous experiences around your sensitivity have kind of shaped how you view it it's difficult to kind of go okay I'm actually going to use this as a positive mm -hmm. um, and kind of build my business around that but yeah I mean I think I learned a lot about myself as well in the whole process, just about embracing that and why the more gentler sides of people are, are seen as like a weak thing that, you yeah. know, you have to be, you know, this real strong extroverted person and like that that's the only way to kind of operate in the world. But um, like, I think it's no surprise that like the vast majority of people who suffer from IBS are female. And we're also generally tend to be a lot more sensitive and empathic, but maybe we're kind of taught along the way that that's not, you know, maybe they're not the best sides of yourself to show because it's, it's, it's like showing a weakness. Oh no, don't be too sensitive because then you're kind of showing that you have some kind yeah, of weakness. The world does yeah. what a bind. <laughs> What a bind yeah. we find ourselves in there. I know. We want you to be nurturing and lovely and kind and yeah. gentle and feminine, but actually we, we don't like it when you cry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think even just bringing up crying, like I think women cry for lots of different reasons. It's not mm. because you're maybe like upset about something. Sometimes it's just frustration. <laughs> it's lots of different reasons or like, um yeah maybe just trying to to be someone you're not in the world and I think that's that can create a lot of problems in your like digestive system just because you're kind of at odds with mm. who you are and who your the world is expecting you to be so yeah I don't know if I'm gone off on a little tangent there I did warn you before the call <laughs> that went <laughs> You, you are so on point on so many levels there was so, like mm. obviously I don't want to interrupt you but there's so many things I was like oh that's a really good point that's a really good point <laughs> that's thing. it's highly commendable mm. that you were willing to go there because mm. sorry a bit croaky <laughs> um because it that that takes real bravery I think to to mm. really go there and feel those feelings and I think we all share very similar experiences in our lifetime in our childhood and things I think we can relate in terms of mm -hmm. how painful some of those things are whereas you say it's it's whether it's you're being picked on or things that are you know you're standing out as being someone a little bit different um yeah. because of your sensitivity and things like that and to be able to go there see it for what it is and as you say bring that level of authenticity and then turn it around as a positive and how you can actually then go out into the world and help others um is amazing and I think you know don't take it lightly that that you've been willing to do that and I think how beautifully everything's come together is because you're willing to do that work and that's why I think we're so passionate about what we do because <clears throat> it's not about designing a beautiful website it's about designing 
and writing the words about something that <clears throat> goes way deeper than that. And I think, yeah, you know, you can go into sort of like <laughs> business, you know, if you look at any kind of like how you launch a business and all that, because they, they always talk about your USP, you know, your unique selling point. And when you come at it from that angle, I think it's very hard. It's, it's, it's really clinical or something. Isn't it? Yeah, it's very clinical. It's kind of commercial. Oh, we like. It's yeah. yeah, it's formulaic. It's like, okay, what's my but actually if the beauty of what you did and what we did together is is that we got we pulled that out, but not deliberately. It was like yeah. through a, an authentic process that actually produced an amazing USP without it without us trying yeah, to, to force you know, it. formulate something. Yeah. And I think that's really because that's when you know it really connects and that's I think why everything has come together so so beautifully and you know I imagine a lot of people will will see you and see your branding and seeing you know how you communicate and totally connect with it because you've done all that work and that will feed through into everything and as you say you're actually stepping in and owning that angle and and that's really powerful yeah because yeah, I suppose. The, <laughs> thanks for thanks for saying all of that, Sammy. It's good to. I suppose that's why I chose to work with both of you because I know that you're fellow empaths <laughs> and you get that angle. And it's it's difficult <laughs> to maybe have such honest conversations like I did with Lee. Um, if yeah, with someone who's maybe not quite <laughs> quite the empath. Um, but yeah, I I think I probably struggled to to find what my angle was for a while um and I think that's why the session with Lee really helped was kind of like okay I am a sensitive person I am an empath and I'm going to own it <laughs> I'm going to make it a big part of my business and kind of how I help people because I genuinely think that that's why people are still struggling so much with IBS and gut health issues it's like you know you can eat the most perfect diet and like still be struggling with symptoms because you're not looking at other areas of your life and I think sometimes even just people not being true to themselves and being inauthentic that in itself can create a lot of problems with your your gut um because you know the, the, the gut brain connection is just so strong that you need to listen more to your gut <laughs> Um, and not always let your head or your heart override that like so yeah. that was one of the things that came out in the messaging wasn't mm -hmm. it was yeah. you feel it in your gut and mm. we all had this shared experience of if we get hit up or anxious about something immediately yeah. head to the bathroom that's yeah. great that's brilliant <laughs> it's the, there immediately and there's nothing no more le <laughs> leveling topic than oh yeah you know we need to do that bathroom thing every time we get stressed out or anxious or we've got an important meeting yeah and it's I guess it's being that person that's maybe not embarrassed to talk about it or mm. I think when you remove the embarrassment for other people then you kind of open the conversation and make it easier like I I a couple of months ago I ran a couple of polls on my Instagram stories just asking people if they were an empath or a sensitive person um like some people didn't know what that was and then but like the vast majority of people it came back that they were empaths and sensitive people but they didn't really know how to deal with that I guess or like how to handle it mm. um but they hadn't actually made the connection between being an empath and having IBS or having a gut issue so I thought that was really interesting yeah and that's such an important conversation to have and I definitely can relate to all the things you said on a, on a personal level of mm. you know, <clears throat> um, doing all the diet requirement things cutting stuff out to see if there's a trigger the FODMAP diet you know and some of those things have a place like sometimes you do yeah, need to strip things sure. back to calm everything down to rebuild again but yeah you don't look at the holistic angle and you and especially for for those of us that where that gut brain connection obviously is quite strong and extra sensitive um that's a massive turning point because otherwise you're just stuck in that wheel aren't you which is I think where you know where, where we've all been of you know you're kind of trying these things nothing's improving you get more stressed because 
you know yeah. life's quite stressful when you're trying to cut out xyz and all the rest of it and then you know that's making your gut symptoms worse and then back you go around the horrible circle all the yeah. while you you know doctors and things are improving but you know I yeah was told the same thing nothing wrong same with you. Things, yeah just got to live with it off you go here's some peppermint oil tablets and like well that's you know that, that's not that's not gonna <laughs> do it <laughs> yeah I mean I guess a big part of me wanting to to like start the business and help people is like I don't want them to to go down those roads and spend years like just getting nowhere and wasting money and time and energy on things that are never going to work there it's never going to be the answer not certainly not by itself like um like so many things it's just um and it's difficult then when you you feel so bad but you're being told there's nothing wrong and just go off and change your diet and you're kind of like okay I don't know where to start yeah it's <laughs> just end up being miserable yeah and I mean I love food I absolutely love food um and I think it so, should be so such a joyous experience for people um and that's something you miss out on when you have IBS and like you said Sammy you're cutting things out <laughs> just yeah it just becomes miserable so <laughs> yeah. don't and really it really does more harm than good yeah Sorry. absolutely yeah in the long run you're just you might be keeping your symptoms at bay or so you think but in the long run you're probably doing far more damage to your gut health than you even realize so and that that can take a long time to come back from so yeah. Yeah. and as a sensitive person having been told for most of your life <clears throat> that's you need to hide that part of yourself when the doctors then tell you no there's nothing wrong with you you think you're going insane yeah, absolutely <laughs> yeah well you look fine you know you look fine you look fine to everyone else and it's kind of like well we can't find anything wrong with you so you know and that's unfortunately like I'm a healthcare professional I know that that's what happens in the medical world like if they can't find something on a test or a scan then you're fine <laughs> but you're not <laughs> that's the thing, so. clearly, yeah. clearly uh, the symptoms are proving that that is not the case if that is not the case exactly yeah obviously that's quite, like plays quite an important role doesn't it in terms of like how you um how you run your business and how how you step into that so if you've got any kind of I guess obviously you're still on your journey, but any sort of tips for other people that are kind of feeling, you know, God, I'm that I'm that sensitive, so I'm that one that's finding it hard to kind of step up and be visible in in business. Um, what would you say to them, really, if they're kind of starting out on this journey? Yeah, um, and it's funny because I've I've had quite a lot of people contact me since I started my business, asking me for tips about how to get started, and you know. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely far from an expert, but um I know there's similar threads of what people struggle with. And I think it is very difficult to sometimes find your place in that whole health and wellness space. Um when you are somebody who is maybe shy or introverted um and a sensitive person. But I would say the first thing is to kind of accept that and not try to force yourself into a cookie cutter kind of like you know you're not um a square peg trying to shove yourself into a round hole <laughs> um just to realize like there is, is there's a place for everyone um and you don't always have to follow the approaches you see online that this is the only way to run your business or this is the only way to build your business and have successful thriving business and loads of clients that you know it, it doesn't always have to be that way so I think again using your gut as like a tool like I think often when it comes to making decisions we can often <clears throat> override that with your head because you're like trying to lose use logic for things and then yeah your heart you're kind of like oh I'm, I'm not but like honestly whenever I have followed my gut for anything in my life it has always been the right decision. It's always worked out. It's when I've gone over, like I've overrided it mm -hmm. and gone and gone, oh no, 
but this makes sense to you know and try to use logic that's usually when I've ended up in situations where my gut is literally like this is wrong this is wrong you know you need to get out so I would kind of use that more in your business as well to kind of go what feels right for you um, and if it doesn't feel right for you to be like, being visible online every day by I don't know going live and Lee and I spoke about this in our power as well just if that's not right for you I mean find a way to be visible and to speak to people that you don't have to be inauthentic um, but yeah listen to your gut more about decisions around your business and how you want to work with people does it feel right Um, be okay with letting opportunities pass if they don't feel like something that you're aligned with or that align with your business or business values um so yeah i mean i think your gut is <laughs> yeah, it's pretty critical really, yeah a really key like a key ally like just that would always be my advice when people come to me even friends or family if they're trying to make a decision but i don't think this is going a little bit off topic but just what's your gut saying and really that's generally the right decision because usually doesn't lie <laughs> yeah and I think I actually got to a stage with my IBS where I actually felt quite grateful for it because because of the <laughs> extra sensitivity I was like okay I know pretty quick yeah when when things are, are not right or not feeling right which is why I was in such a t- terrible state in my previous career where you know clearly again I was wasn't feeling yeah you know I had a place there and I think again it's quite a different mindset change to kind of switch that around and, and view it as a as a positive like actually this you know because I think a lot of us <clears throat> lose our intuition and lose that mm. sensitivity because of the world we're in, that actually um we're quite lucky to have to have that extra sort of layer of sensitivity where very quickly your body's gonna gonna tell you if if things don't feel right and ironically I had that when I studied nutrition loved it <sighs> you know for the last 10 years I've been reading and researching and doing all the things because of you know my own gut health and, and yeah. learning stuff. I thought, oh well I love it that much I might as well you know go into that field and you know shutting the door on more my creative side was what was you know my body was telling me no and I was like okay I need to find a way to like you know bring these three together because I still want to do that and um and again use that sensitivity so I think as you were saying obviously we live in a world where you know it's like people shout the loudest get heard the most but I think the more of us that have these conversations that shows it can be done and it can be done in your own way and as we've talked about before Lee you know kind of doing business a bit slower yeah steady club (laughs) (laughs) we're all fair members um it's good to show that there, you know, there are ways of doing it differently, like like you said, and 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 using your gut as a as an ally. I love that. I think. Mm. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think most creatives are are sensitive sensitive folk as well. Um, and it's interesting you bring that up, Sammy, because I would always have thought that a creative person is someone who's good at art, and that's the only way to express creativity. And I actually think a lot of adults struggle so much like you're saying with your gut because you're not allowing yourself to express your creativity in whatever way that may be Um, for me like it was food and cooking and baking and a little bit of photography and that but like that's the part of the process of building the website with you that I know you really enjoyed but I loved it as well it was just kind of like um being able to I suppose you show your creative side through the website as well um and I I think when you don't listen to that it's like you said you were really struggling in your previous career because you weren't getting to to kind of um express that I guess so that's really another really interesting point when it comes to gut issues (laughs) maybe you just need to express your creativity and whatever that is like I think there's so much focus on academia and being academic and you know not coloring outside the lines when you're in school um and then people just build the story I'm, I'm not good I'm not creative like there's no such thing literally you know everyone's creative it's just I, I might not be able to paint mm-hmm. but like, 
<laughs> yeah, can be exactly. in other ways. Yeah. yeah. As a kid, you don't think like, oh, I'm not creative. I can't pick up that pen and just randomly draw on a page or pick up that paper. Yeah. Or, or make paper. a potion or mud pie yeah. or oh, yeah. <laughs> Go through the rummage exactly. through the bushes and <laughs> gather. <gasping, laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, your imagination is just mm-hmm. yeah. I guess untouched or kind of you're not. You haven't been told to be a certain way or that you know you're not good at certain things. So, you know, it's okay yeah. to express your creativity. Whereas, yeah, I suppose as the years you clock up the years, you're kind of that gets um dulled down a lot. I guess. And then we only use our imaginations to see to plan out the worst case scenarios for everything and end up in that might that lovely spiral. Yeah, we need to recapture the um the lighter side of imagination. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you mentioned before that you kind of obviously weren't feeling um that confident with sharing your website and sharing your business. How do you feel that's changed through going through this this process and kind of the relaunch? Um, how do you sort of view your business now? Oh, like completely differently. You know, I feel a lot more um, aligned with the brand and the my business values. And I feel like the website really reflects that. And I'm so confident to share it um, on any platform and direct people to it. Um, and I feel like, you know, even the the professional photos um I would struggle with being the one photographed I would much be much more comfortable behind the camera but even for that I kind of you know I wanted to look like myself and just so that people I would be able to connect with people and kind of not feel like I think in the health and wellness (laughs) arena sometimes things can feel very unattainable for people and it just gets so complicated that you just feel like people are way off over there and you you just can't get to that place whereas I didn't want that I wanted it to be kind of very like you know I found what works for me and you know I've made all the mistakes that people make when they have IBS and yeah I I don't want people to struggle like that I want people to realize that it is possible for them to kind of get to that place that's not you know way off in the ether (laughs) if that makes sense but yeah I mean I feel completely differently about the business now and feel a lot more like it's it's me I'm not trying to be somebody else if that makes sense um but I'm also still sticking to the slow and steady club and it's not me forcing myself out into being the world in a way that doesn't feel comfortable for me so yeah and that's really important because I think that is when you'll get that real connection because people you know people can sense it on the other end can't they when something's forced or when you'll be like oh I I, I I haven't to do it because I should be doing it I mean we've yeah. often said like you won't catch either of us dancing on reels or <laughs> oh no oh no as soon as I see that email come through from whatever platform you know the latest trend on Instagram I'm just like delete yeah I, want no. trend. <laughs> I want something that's sustainable and that fits me I don't want a trend thanks very much I know and like the algorithms are always changing. So, I mean, you know, you could be <laughs> um, putting out reels of you dancing around for weeks and months. The next thing, the algorithms change and now it's something else that they're preferring the content on. So, I mean, I think it's a lot of it's just ignoring that and kind of going, well, I do think when you put out the most authentic version of yourself, that you'll find the right people or the right people will find you like your right clients because... Yeah, I mean, I think one part of being a sensitive person and being an empath is I think you can sense inauthenticity, inauthenticity, <laughs> that's a hard word to say, from a mile away. So, um, yeah, they're not the kind of people you want to work with. Um, Do you have any tips, Neve, for how to work with your gut and sensitivity as your superpower that you would like to share with our listeners? Um, in your business, Lee? how to work with it in the business or just in general you you choose yeah um, <laughs> I, I suppose it applies to both really but I guess it's it's going back to what I had just said a little bit earlier about um like accepting that that's you're a sensitive person that you do feel things in your gut and that's okay and like 
Sammy said now she sees that as a strength, like a um a tool that you can actually use for, I suppose, like guiding yourself through your life or through your businesses. You know, listen to your gut. Don't ignore that. Don't try and override it with logic, what your head is telling you. Oh no, but I should do this or I should, because your gut doesn't deal with that. You know, it doesn't deal in shoulds or anything else. It's literally that's I mean I mean I think it's amazing um superpower to have to actually be like no this doesn't feel right you know and actually listening to that rather than like I said I have in the past not listened to it and it's invariably led me into situations that I don't feel are good for me or it doesn't feel aligned if it's a job or whatever else um so yeah I mean I would definitely that would be one thing I would want people to take away with it is listen to your gut um and it is usually right <laughs> um and I think that's a very useful tool for people to have starting out in their business you know because it can be difficult it's a very noisy place and you're kind of thinking oh I should be doing this and I should be doing that and then you end up just forgetting who you are and who what you're about and what your business is about so I guess it's just um trying to remove yourself from all of that noise and just listen to your gut like what's it telling you um and if something doesn't feel right or feel aligned you'll kind of know <laughs> yeah it doesn't, it doesn't lie it, does it? it doesn't lie no no and it, it doesn't really have a language of kind of yeah you should do this or you shouldn't be doing that it's just very much it's a feeling like a gut feeling there's, there's a reason there's that expression <laughs> and your instinct I mean it's it's a survival thing if if you go back to your hunter gatherers like the gut is just you know it's how we sense danger and how comfortable we feel in situations and things like that so it's just um I think over the years you learn not to listen to it and maybe abandon your own gut instinct because you're looking at what everyone else is doing or whatever else is distracting you from that but I think when you're really quiet and you actually listen to what it's telling you and go with that that's usually the right path to go so what kind of what would be your top three tips for anyone that is suffering with um IBS or a similar gut condition um because we know how debilitating it can be in in um mm. in in lifestyle and what would be your top three tips for anyone that is suffering with that at the moment so I was thinking about this before coming on the call um if someone was to ask me what would be like the top tips that I would give and the first thing I would say is first of all you know don't (laughs) self-diagnose and don't be just using the internet as a resource for what you should be doing what you shouldn't be doing I would definitely get the right help and support for that um and stop focusing on food and diet um yes it definitely has a place but I think when you're really honest with yourself usually diet is not the problem um and it's other areas of your lifestyle that you need to look at maybe stress management um sleep was a huge thing for me um and I think that was a big aha moment for me um just connecting my sleep my really poor sleep pattern and my gut issues and IBS flare-ups so ever since I've prioritized my sleep that's been a massive improvement for me I've seen a massive improvement in my symptoms um but yeah just looking at your life as a whole as opposed to just my gut issues are down to what I'm eating um I can probably categorically tell you it's not (laughs) so um but obviously it's important to rule out anything more serious that's underlying so definitely don't self-diagnose and self-treat get the right help um and yeah the third thing just going back to just listen to your gut you know um and tune into it more and and let it lead you I guess more in your lifestyle choices as well just you know I think that's why we often end up in stressful situations um and again that can affect your sleep is it's not listening to your gut like I think a lot of things come back to it so if you listen to it in the first place and kind of let that lead you in your decisions um I, I don't think you can go too far wrong but yeah it's almost a case of like learning to nurture it isn't it rather than yeah 
seeing a highly sensitive gut as something that's really negative because obviously when you're in that space you don't mm. want those symptoms so you can have quite a negative connotation with your gut um and so actually learning to nurture that sensitivity rather than trying to like force it away or yeah what, um yeah. exactly and I mean seeing it as part of you as opposed to something you want to get rid of um mm. and I think overall that's going to help because you're actually just embracing that that's the type of person you are you are sensitive you feel things in your gut um and maybe the problem is you need you haven't been listening to it enough and you need to just tune in more so I think that's that has been a big aha moment for me over the last few years just realizing that um actually I am a very sensitive person um there's times where I wish I wasn't and I feel like it would be easier to move through the world if I wasn't <laughs> that way but unfortunately yep. <laughs> yeah yep. I think we, yeah we all know that but um at the same time like you said Sammy we need more empath now more than ever um and there's lots of ways to run your business um I think there's a space for everyone Neve, what one thing do you want listeners to take away from this episode so if we started the phrase dear soulful business owner I wish you knew this blank how would you fill it <laughs> um I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot but I would say dear soulful business owner I wish that you knew that there is space for you in the health and wellness arena um and that your sensitivity is a strength so stop looking at it as a weakness and use that to um guide your business yeah beautiful yeah well I would want people to come away with love it beautiful you've shared so much wisdom today Nate we're very very grateful (laughs) Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, I just want to say thanks to both of you for helping me, um, Lee, for helping me find the right words. Which, um, after years of scientific writing, it was very difficult to start to learn to speak in your own voice again. Mm. Um, and Sammy, obviously, for um, understanding everything that I was about and being able to articulate it and get it onto the website so beautifully. Um, yeah. So thank you both so much and really enjoying the podcast. I think it's great that there are sensitive um, business owners out there talking about it and normalizing it and it's going to make it easier for people. Um, And yeah, slow and steady club till I die. (laughs) (laughs) One of the founding members, Neve, I think we can. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Need to rally more troops. (laughs) Thank you so, so much. Um, it's been an absolute joy and pleasure to chat with you on the podcast today and to work with you. Um, you are Likewise, likewise to both of you. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you.